Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I? on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at how to build your own PC. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at the motherboard and the processor. Now, the motherboard and the CPU are the very heart of your system, so you want to be sure that you choose a combination that meets your needs. There's two major kinds of processors out there these days. One of them is from Intel Corporation, and the other batch of processors is from AMD, or Advanced Micro Devices. Now, both of these companies make perfectly good processors. Intel seems to have the lead at the moment in terms of performance, whereas AMD seems to be more in the lead in terms of price and value for your money. They tend to leapfrog each other in terms of performance over time, so keep an eye on AMD and Intel to make sure that the one that you're looking at is, in fact, the best choice for your money at that point. Now, getting the fastest and most expensive processor isn't necessarily your best choice because you may be looking at a system that just reads your email, uh, goes on the web, does a few things, but doesn't necessarily have to do the highest end stuff like gaming or photo manipulation. So in that case, you may want to look at something that's a little bit more value-oriented, like one of the AMD processors. In this choice, we're actually going for one of the i7 processors from Intel because we're looking at something that is a little bit higher performing, so maybe we can do some gaming with this. Now, you have to match the processor with your motherboard. Each of them has a socket. In this case, the socket is known as the LGA1156. Previous generations of the Intel processor used the LGA775. Now, that refers to the number of pins in the interface on the back of the processor. So you want to be sure that you're matching the two because they won't fit into each other's sockets, obviously. Same with AMD and Intel. They don't fit into each other's motherboards. So when you're buying a motherboard, you want to be sure that the motherboard you're choosing actually has the right pin configuration for the processor. They'll generally say on the box, Intel or AMD compatible. The motherboard boxes should also show what type of socket they're compatible with, in this case, LGA1156. You'll also want to be sure that the motherboard you're choosing has all the connectors you want. So all of the slots you're going to need for add-in cards, all of the connectors inside for hard drives, and all the connectors on the back for USB devices, speakers if you want to use integrated, and that sort of thing. Speaking of integrated, some of the motherboards you can get actually feature audio and video capabilities built right onto the board. So you don't necessarily have to buy an audio card or a video card to add into your system you're building. Generally speaking, they're a little bit lower quality on the motherboard itself, so if you're looking for something a little bit higher quality, you'll want to go separately with the video cards and the audio cards. So let's take a look inside here and actually get the CPU into the motherboard. That's the first step in this whole process. Before you get started, make sure you're on a clean, static-free surface to avoid zapping the components. Take the motherboard out of the box and remove it from the foil bag. Your motherboard box should come with a bunch of other cables and connectors inside. Keep these handy because you'll need these in later steps in this process. Generally, there's a little insert inside the socket to protect it from damage. In this case, we're going to unhook the little lever on the side that keeps the socket closed, open it up, and remove the little insert. You notice the CPU is notched, so that it can only go into the socket in a particular way. If you're using a socket with pins, it'll be the same sort of thing. The pins will be arranged in a certain orientation, so that it'll only go in one way. Be very careful that you don't bend or break anything while you're putting the CPU into the socket. If you try to force it, it could be a very expensive mistake. Align the CPU carefully with the socket itself, then reverse the process of closing up the socket using the lever. Don't force it if it doesn't feel like it's going. If you buy your CPU in a retail box, typically it'll also come with a cooling fan. And it needs some sort of thermal paste between the CPU and the fan to actually bond it properly and allow the heat to dissipate. This particular one has it built right onto the back of the cooling fan. The motherboard should have a space for the fan to connect, whether it's a gigantic bracket on it, or in this case, just a few holes on the motherboard that the fan will snap right into. With the Intel fans, you line up the holes on the motherboard with the pegs on the back of the CPU fan and push them through carefully and gently until they click through. You'll see the feet come through on the other side. Then once the cooling fan is securely in place, you want to plug it into the motherboard. Generally near the CPU socket, there's a little fan connector, labeled CPU fan. You'll plug in the power cable from your CPU fan into this pin. And now you're done the first step in this process. The next step will be to take this and put it into a case. In the next episode, we'll take a look at selecting a case for your motherboard and how to put this inside. Don't forget to check the show notes for this and all the other episodes at butterscotch.com.